Okay, hello everyone. A new, brand new soap today. This is called Cocoa Butter Creme Silk. And it contains, first of all, that's just um, the beeswax cooling down. It happens because the beeswax has such a high melting point. My um, oils have cooled down quite a bit and it can congeal up a bit, but I should be fine once I get the lie in. So the first additive is basically a cocoa butter super fat, quite a high one. It's got honey in mixed in this as well. So it's raw organic cocoa butter. I've got cream here for the cream portion. And I have in my lye here, it was pre-blended last night, I've got tassa silk that's been melted and I'll show you what that is. Tassa silk is basically these fibres and you cut them up very finely and add them to the lye when the lye is very hot. There's a bit of a knack to it because the lye has to be very hot in, or, in, other, in order to dissolve these. They're really, really fine. And they give the soap... It's got a really nice silky feel to it, actually. It's got a nice silky lather to it as well. I like the way silk soap feels. Um, I've got one other soap that I use silk in. It's called Rasool Clay and Silk. And yeah, that's got a nice kind of texture to it. And that is about it. It's a very simple soap and it's a kind of soap that I just love physically making. It's just very kind of stress-free. I wanted to break from all the like multiple additives and it's a, it's a nice soap to look at. I love the look of simple soap as well. It's not got any fancy, it's not going to have any fancy designs or any kind of fancy uh, swirls or layers. It's just going to be one solid colour of soap. A feel good soap. and. Um, I'll show you the fragrance oil as well. It's a beautiful, beautiful hue of this bright orange. As oh gosh. Hold on. So it's a combination of three simple essential oils. Blood orange, uh, rosemary and Lutsia cubiba, which is Mei Chung. Um, this is a combination that is not that spectacular just smell, smelling it from the from the beaker here but once it's inside the soap it's amazing once it saponifies fragrance always gets morphed to some extent when it's saponified within soap you're never sure what you're going to get sometimes it can remain pretty much legitimately the same but a lot of times it does kind of change to some degree and it's usually the citrus oils that are affected, um, things like orange. I think lemon just totally disappears. I don't even bother using lemon anymore. Um, but most citrus get, they don't disappear, but they get dulled down quite a bit. Okay, so I'm going to start on that. Oh, and this is my new mould. I got quite annoyed with the bowing out, do you know, on the sides of the brambleberry one so I just got one that's <clears throat> got a bit of support okay I'm going to start now there is a chance this will accelerate though because I have got quite a, a huge water discount probably the most I've ever done it's about 25%. So we'll see what happens. Right, I'm adding in my essential oils first because I have um, no kind of, there's no chance these will these accelerate. These are all fine. Okay, so I'm adding my cocoa butter. Super fat with the honey. Things might heat up now, so but I've got my mold right beside me, so again, should not be a problem, hopefully. And my thick, thick, delicious cream. 
I have not made soap with cream for a very long time. I used to make a soap called avocado cream silk with avocado puree and um, the cream and the silk, but I don't make that for ages. I'm going to try not to get any of the sides. Don't like, <coughs> oh, excuse me, don't like ruining my new molds. Okay, let's see if you can see. doesn't quite hold. I thought this would be okay for a 1kg batch. It's just slight. Oh yeah. dear. It's the first time I've ever had soap to spare. Let's see if I can fit that in. Sorry about the boiler, I have no control over that decided to come on when it wants to. Okay, I'm going to need... <laughs> I'm going to need something to put the rest of the soap in. She's hold on. Okay, I'm back with something I can use. I don't want to put it into just any kind of mold. I want to be able to use it as a bar. Okay. Put it in the middle ones. If you can see this. There you go. This is another brambleberry mold. I haven't used this in ages. This is lying in the attic. It's quite it's, this is actually a very nice mold. Of um brambleberries. I like the size of the bar as well. I used to make my sea salt soap in this. Let's get the last of that out. of one that'll be quite a thin bar. <laughs> I can use that as a sample. But actually I'll probably use that as a display because I, I've got a local event coming up soon. I have I, I don't usually do local events. I mostly sell online but towards Christmas there's a few ones I take up. So that is about it. I will come back when I am about to cut and demold these. Thank you for watching. Okay, so back again to unmold these. It's been two days since I made them. I don't think the I don't think the big log, log um, mold will be ready to cut yet I think. It's my olive oil recipe and like I said before that takes quite a while before I can cut it. But I can unmold these at least. And I can unmold that because um, I've only got one of these these um, wooden molds here so I'm going to need that for my next soap. Okay so I'll show you what I'm doing. So oh lovely. Nice smell. It's quite nice and firm actually. A lot firmer than I'd expect. But then I did do a really big um, water discount. 
on this so that could be let me try to show you as well that could be what's um making it so hard this is very hard actually this, that is very nice i love it when it's this kind of firm hmm so these two put to the side right so I've decided that I'm just going to basically use less oil weight when I'm making in this mold. Um, when I checked the dimensions, it did say it holds up to, I think it was 1200, 300, no, not, yeah, 1300 or 1200, I can't remember, okay, um, grams. And technically, that's how much I made with the water discount. But it went over, so I'll probably just decrease my um, oil weight to down around about 900. The reason why I got this mold was partially because the, the width of it is exactly the same width as the soap logs I cut with the Bud Hafner cut, cutter. That's the standard size of my bar. And when I was using the other mold, I might, I probably will use that every now and again when I, when this mold's well occupied. Um, but that other mold was giving me quite a thick bar with the bigger size soap. Okay, that was easy. <laughs> Very easy. To be honest, I think this is ready to cut. I didn't bring my multi-bar card, but I'm just going to pause you and bring that. Okay, so I am just about to cut. Oh yeah, this is definitely ready to cut. It is very firm. I think that water discount made a huge difference in how quickly I can cut the logs. Oh, that's just beautiful. I love the look of simple soap. And it smells really nice as well. I I looked back on my um, making video and I realised that I said that this the blend contained Lutea Kebeba orange and rosemary. It doesn't contain any rosemary at all. I was totally, I don't just, I wasn't feeling too well that day, put it that way. I was uh, recovering from a really, really bad um, cold virus I'd had like the previous week. Um, but no, this has sweet uh, blood orange, it's got let's say kebeba, and it's got eucalyptus blue gum. That's the three oils in this. And it's really, it's really citrusy and it's really refreshing. And it's just got such a beautiful, simple look. This is like this the real look of soap. Luxurious soap. I haven't made soap like this for so long, it was just almost like a craving just to make kind of real soap without all the kind of fancy additives and colours. I made a soap a year ago called um, Castile Milk. It's made with 100% organic extra virgin olive oil and um, for its oil content um, for the water part I used 100% raw organic cow's milk and for the additives I just used a lots and lots of honey just to get bubbles because olive oil doesn't create much bubbles on its own and I also used beeswax just to help harden it up and that I'm, I'm leaving that to cure for two years actually just so that I can get the best of it and it's got a similar look it's totally unfragranced as well I'll show you actually 
just so you can compare. So that's my Castile milk soap. That'll be ready next year because I'm curing this for two years. It was made in May 2015. No, not 2015, May 2016 and it will be ready in May 2018, so next year. And it's already become really hard but I just want it to become the best it can be before it's used because 100% olive oil soap is just so... Um, it's, it's very... It's not got a, much of a lather, but the longer you leave it, it does create a lather. It's like a, almost like a gunky soap. People call it like gunky, but I love, but it's very, very good for you because even though it doesn't create bubbles and lather, it creates a kind of like a, a um, almost like a creamy foam type kind of lather. It's just really good for your skin. So that's the difference. So it's quite similar in appearance. But obviously this is quite quite a bit hard now. Mm, nice. This is totally unfragranced. I made it so it's extra gentle. <clears throat> okay, that's about it. Thank you very much for joining me.